I'm a dyslexic, I'm taking a language course right now, and I'm actually having a good time. So this video is about how I made this work for me. Hey, my name is Ari, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you some evidence-based learning strategies that you should know about, especially if you're dyslexic. Within that chapter, I will go over Bloom's taxonomy, active learning, and space repetition. After all of that is done, I will get into the implementation of all these concepts while also giving you dyslexic-specific advice. So let's get into the science. According to Bloom's taxonomy, you should focus on higher levels of learning. And these different levels are represented in the form of a pyramid. So at the lowest level of this pyramid is remembering. And you can do this by using, for example, flashcards. The second level would be understanding. And here you get familiar with sentence structure, for example. You might get to know how to build past tense sentences or future tense sentences in the language that you're trying to learn. So in the next level, you would apply the knowledge that you remembered and the things that you learned to a conversation with a person that speaks the language that you're trying to learn. On the fourth level, you start to analyze. You might be looking at a conversation at your phone with a native speaker and you start to make comparisons between the way you structure sentences and how the native speaker does. And you start drawing conclusions from that. Now we get to the level of evaluation. You start to prioritize certain concepts. You start to critique the work of others. And of course, also that of yourself. On the top of the pyramid is create. Here you start to plan things, develop new concepts. And maybe you even start to teach these concepts to other people. The more you focus on activities higher up in the pyramid, the more effective your learning becomes. So if we take a look at all these different levels of the pyramid, what stands out is that all of them are very active activities. And this is definitely not a coincidence. In fact, in education studies, there is a concept called active learning, and there are numerous studies on this topic. And researchers tend to agree that it's a very effective method. Now, even if you manage to make your learning process really active, and even if you focus on these higher levels of learning, it might still be that your learning process is very inefficient. And that is because there is an element missing, which is spaced repetition. So let's say you learn some new information today. Now, if you don't use it a few days after, it will be gone. This is due to the forgetting curve, which basically states the following. The more time passes, the more you will forget. If you learn the material at increasingly spaced intervals, then this forgetting curve slowly flattens out. You will remember more of the knowledge that you need to remember, and it will also stay with you for a longer amount of time. So now we get to the implementation and the dyslexic specific advice. In the morning, I will usually give myself some time to practice. So the first thing that I would do is I would have a look at my vocabulary. And to do that, I have an app called Anki. It is basically a normal flashcard app, but it has spaced repetition built into the app. That means you will have to rate each word according to difficulty. That way you will be tested on the words that you don't know very well more regularly. So you won't waste time on revisiting flashcards that you already know. Next, I'm preparing the text that we're going to read in my course. It can be very uncomfortable for dyslexics in general to have to read out loud without a heads up. So uh, what I do is I listen to the audio file of this text and then I go through it sentence by sentence. And if I then still have some time, I will focus on the grammar side of things, which is usually my homework. When I go to class, I also go with the knowledge that my teacher knows about my dyslexia. I told her at the very beginning of class and I told her what that specifically means for me. And I would recommend that you are open about it as well. Another thing that I believe is valuable when it comes to learning is to rely on the things that worked for you in the past. So for example, I know that I learned very well with audio files. And this is actually something that is true for dyslexics in general. This study found that the use of audiobooks improved in-school performance in terms of attitude, motivation, and involvement. And additionally, they saw a reduction in the number of emotional behavioral problems. 
Another principle uh, that is uh, helpful is intrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation can be defined as an incentive to engage in a specific activity that derives from pleasure in the activity itself, rather than because of any external benefits that might be obtained, like for example money or course credits. Intrinsic motivation is a strong learning force because it makes space repetition occur in a natural way. For example, I'm into cycling, so I prioritize those kind of words because I know that it is likely that I will come into contact with these words later on. Maybe I will buy something new to repair my bike or I see a video where I encounter these words then I will have to retrieve these words again out of my memory and that way slowly these words make it into my long-term memory. So I would suggest that you focus on topics that you're naturally interested in. Now let's have a look at my three favorite ways of engaging in these higher levels of learning. The first one has to do with applying. For example, I would have conversations with my fiance in Hebrew. The second strategy corresponds with the creation level of the pyramid. Simply put, this strategy is teaching. Find somebody to whom you can explain the things that you learned. This will tremendously improve your ability to then remember these things. Additionally, what will help you is if you close the book with the things that you need to learn and then you test yourself. Write everything down, make comparisons, use drawings to visualize everything, and then analyze what you know and what you don't know. So these are all things that I wish I would have known sooner. So uh, this is it. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.